Um, welcome to another bonus video. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, a couple of things about geometric random variable that I uh, skipped over during the lecture. The first thing that I would like to talk about is how to find the mean of a geometric random variable. So actually this is, this derivation is uh, mostly related with mathematics. Uh, it's not going to help very much with, with, with the statistical concepts. That's why I'm not going to go over the variance of uh, finding the variance of a geometric random, random variable, which is in similar terms, but even slightly more involved. So assuming that X is a geometric random variable, the question is find expected value of X. All right, so expected value of X is going to be found using uh, from K equals one to infinity K one minus P minus one P equation. So how did I obtain all this stuff? This one is actually probability of X is equal to K. Right, so the success is obtained at the k step and k goes from one to actually x takes the values of one to k is the dummy variable here and it goes to infinity. So it actually it's a uh, discrete and uh, accountably finite set. Anyway, now we have to find this uh, some, some using arithmetics we have to find a solution to this uh, term here, to this term in the summation. So actually, let's start with the easier case. P is constant, so take it out. So what we have here from K equals one to infinity, uh, let's see, K times, and this one minus P is equal to Q. I'm going to use it to make it much more easier to handle. It's going to be K minus one. Now what we are going to do is something like this. Let me say, note that derivative of k power of q with respect to q is equal to k times q to the power k minus one. And that's a very nice property. So actually what we have done here is look at this expression and see if there is any other way to show it in, a, in an easier representation. Actually, we don't like this K here. And there is, of course, this representation will be made available, will be made possible using some other operator possibly. And this is this der taking derivative with respect to Q operator is the one that we use. Actually, if we use it on this uh, term here, we would have obtained this one. Therefore, I can replace this whole term by using this. So what we have here would be from k equal to infinity, k to the power k, q. So we apply this operator on q to the power k and we obtain this and we add from k is equal to one to infinity and we obtain the expected value, expected uh, very, uh, value of x. Now the important point is since both summation and this uh, derivation are both um, uh, linear operators, we can change, interchange them. Therefore, the result is going to be if when we do that, k equals one to infinity q to the power k. Now, what is this? Actually, I'm just going to concentrate on this part from mathematics course, uh, probably the second or, I, I'm not sure whether the first or the, I think the second mathematics course you have taken uh, at Bozici University, maybe you remember this. So this whole quantity is going to be equal to when k is equal to one is going to be q, k is equal to the q square, q power, and it goes like this to plus infinity. And if you recall actually Taylor series expansion, actually something like this, squared infinity, all these values, let me not write infinity, it doesn't 
factor. Nice. So this expression can be written as 1 over 1 minus q, given that this condition holds. Actually, for our case, this condition holds because we are talking about a probability here. And this, since actually, if there is, there should be some uh, success probability, if q, you can say q is going to be equal to 1, yes, it may be satisfied from a probabilistic point of view that in this case, p is going, going to be equal to 0. Therefore, and in, uh, we are not going to obtain a success in finite number of trials. Anyway, so we have this series here. So when you take one and put it on the other side, this series is going to be written as the one in the square, in, in the square is going to be equal to one minus q minus one. And let's make it look nicer. One minus one plus q over one minus q, and we have q one minus q. That's great. Now let's put it continue from here. Expected value is going to be equal to p times the partial derivative with respect to q of what q over one minus q. Note that I do not change it into p because the derivation is with the derivative is with respect to q. Then I should uh, change also the derivative here. So this is going to be if I have done everything correctly. Did I do everything correctly? Here one here q here. Yes, it seems so. So this term is going to be equal to we have one minus q here minus if I take the derivative of course I'm going to have p here now I'm dealing with this part and this one is going to be q times one the derivative of this thing is going to be equal to minus one so this is going to be plus one over one minus q square and one minus q these will cancel I'm going to end up with p square and when I multiply this by p well actually I have changes into p so and there is one p here these p will cancel and I'm going to obtain one over p which is the expected value of a random variable now for, for the variance the, the a similar approach is uh, performed I'm not going to repeat here because it's too much arithmetics but we have k square here so you have to handle this k square times q to the power k minus 1, and you should find a way to do that. A similar approach is employed. All right, so the second thing I would like to talk about here is, uh, I think from a statistical point of view, it's very much important, lack of memory uh, property in geometric distribution. Actually, I would like to show this in more formal terms, what uh, this expression is what this uh, property is actually. I think I have shown it during the uh, lecture video, but uh, here I'm going to talk about it in more detail. In the lecture video, I said that this is basically what the lack of memory property suggests. Which means do not, I do not care how much, uh, how many trials have been passed, x1 what is important is the additional number of trials up to this point no, no success has been obtained that's great it does not change the probability of success still the probability of success of further of x2 trials is going to be like starting from uh, the very first trial so basically let's show that this is the case because i only said this i, I suggested this is the lack of memory property and i think we got to write the question where this actually where does this come from and actually we are going to see that it's not something new it is just very simple arithmetics the only thing that we need here is taylor series expansion all right, what is the, the Taylor series expression? This time it's going to be, I'm going to show it in terms of y. Note that in the previous slide, I showed this for an infinite number of uh, terms. All right, where was that? All right, this one, this one go, uh, the, the, the q terms, the, the power went to infinite. infinity. 
Now it's not going to infinity, but it's going to go to a finite term. Y to the power F. Such a series can be shown with this formulation. I'm not going to go over the, the, the uh, proof of that. Again, given that the absolute value of Y is smaller than so this is the mathematical theorem at hand. Now let's go into statistics. This conditional statement actually can be written by, if we go back to the second lecture, uh, what we have learned in the second lecture, conditional probability is simply intersection of these two events divided by this probability of this event. So what we do is basically the we intersection of these two events, this probability, we normalize with respect to the probability of the first event. Now we need to understand what this is. Actually, this intersection is, if you like, you can write it in this manner. That's okay, both of them are fine. We should realize that this quantity is actually equal to probability of x greater than x1 plus x2. Reasoning is very simple because we are talking about a capital a, a random variable being greater than a certain value. If this is greater than a certain value, it should be already greater than x1. The middle range is not satisfied for, by this event. Therefore, it's not going to be in the intersection. Therefore, we can think about the whole thing like this. The event that x is greater than x1 is this one, whereas this one is going to be x1 plus x2. Since the second one is going to be, this one is going to be a subset of this uh, event, the intersection will be also the very same event. Therefore, this can be written as x greater than x1 plus x2 divided by probability of x greater than x1. Now, I'm just going to concentrate on this term, x1 greater than, what is this? x greater than, let's call it a, so that we are not going to be confused by this. Later, we are going to come here and continue. This is equal to what? Actually, this is equal to 1 minus uh, P minus Q times P minus Q times P. And it goes like this until Q times A minus one times P. This is what the probability of X greater than. Why is this so? Because actually this is equal to one minus probability of X equals A. And this one actually consists of the, the a success in the first trial, success in the second trial, a success in the A, tri a trial. And the probabilities associated with this probability mass functions are, this one is P, this one is QP, and this one is Q to the power A minus one times P. And therefore, since I'm going to uh, uh, subtract from one, you can find this relation. Now, this series, can we show it in a simpler representation? Yes, we can. If we take into the common parenthesis of P, this is going to be equal to one plus Q plus Q squared plus Q to the power A minus one. Now, this series, as you can see, is identical to this series. Therefore, I can use this equation here. This is going to be equal, let me use another uh, colored pen, so it's going to be easier to see. One minus Q A minus one, it turns into A over one over Q. And therefore this whole thing is going to be equal to one minus P times one minus Q to the power A divided by one minus Q. Note that one minus Q is P, therefore these will cancel and one minus one Q to the power A is going to be simply equal to Q to the power A. Now we have a very nice relation. This is going to be equal to Q to the power A. So if we are asking a question that the uh, number of trials exceed a, a, a value, a, 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 an integer, it can be found as Q to the power, the failure probability raised to the power A. 
Now I'm going to come here again and continue. Therefore, probability of x greater than x1 plus x2 is going to be equal to using this formulation is going to be x1 plus x2 in the numerator and q to the power x1 in the denominator. And if we actually uh, perform this operation, it's going to be equal to q to the power x2. And now I go back. Note that q to the power a is equal to p x greater than a. Therefore, this is going to be equal to probability of x greater than x2. Now, where did we, uh, from which point did we arrive this solution? We started here. Therefore, this is going to be equal to this expression, this one. What was the proof? What was the uh, required proof? It was this statement, which is this one, equal to this one, which we did. Actually, please go over this uh, very simple derivation and try to understand the concept. Let these be not only x, x1, x2. Think about real numbers and it's going to be easier to understand. Note that this is going to be applicable only for geometric distribution. If you apply this procedure, for instance, to binomial distribution, you are not going to obtain this result. What do I mean by that? For instance, if you ask a question like this, we have, think about the previous question in our uh, lecture, we had 10 uh, multiple choice questions with four different choices. Then we randomly select and we obtain, we may obtain different number of correct answers. Now here is that question, given that, uh, you have answered at least five correct questions. What is the probable that you have answered six, six or seven correct questions? Now here using lack of, if lack of memory property or something like this were applicable in binomial distribution, then you would just take into consideration the additional number, which is going to be here equal to, actually I said given five, What's the, the, the probability that you are going to be have or at least five? What is the probability that of uh, obtaining seven correct answers or at least seven correct answers, whatever you would like to say? Well, if you just subtract those values and come up with the result, that would be wrong. The correct way of solving that kind of problem is using a procedure like this one. Write the conditional value, conditional uh, probability equation and solve the whole thing. For geometric distribution, you can also do that, but you don't need to do because as the derivation shows, uh, the whole thing actually goes into this result, which suggests lack of memory property. So lack of mem memory property is both a result of this arithmetic derivation and also due to the nature of the empirical nature of the process.